Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of the Sus. Like I said in the first video in the Michigan TCU game, uh, it looks like our college football bowl winning streak. We had a mini winning streak going. Looks like it's gonna end today. I lost UCLA and Notre Dame. Yo, update. So when I recorded this video, Notre Dame was losing and just threw a pick. So I thought it was over. They came back one and covered. So it looks like the hot streak continues. Anyway, let's talk college football playoffs because we got the big game. Michigan TCU is cool, but this is the big game. Ohio State, Georgia, uh, a, a game I thought was gonna be the national championship entering the season. We get it in the first round. Welcome to the Swiss. Get the Suez. All right, Buckeyes versus Bulldogs in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl here. Line opens up Georgia minus six and a half, and it basically stays at six and a half for a whole month. Even though the public is heavy on Georgia, 81% of the tickets, 83% of the money on the Bulldogs as of Monday morning. Now, nothing really changes throughout the week, but take a look at earlier this morning. I'm recording this on Friday night. So take a look what happens Friday morning. You get a pretty significant chunk of Ohio State money in, and it knocks the line down to six. Now, you might be thinking, Sauce, who cares? It's a 21% shift that happens all the time. And you're right, except for this is a little bit of a unique situation because this line's been open for a month. So... A 21% shift in one morning when it's been open for 27, 28 days. I'm not saying like this is a, oh my God, start panicking, but it's definitely something to notice that there's a significant amount of Ohio State money coming in today. So let's cap this game. If you subscribe to this channel, you already know the first step. We're running the numbers through the spreadsheet. According to the model, the line in this game should be Georgia minus 6.06. So that tells us absolutely nothing. <laughs> so that's exactly where the books have it. So heading into this season, if you told me we were gonna see Georgia, Ohio State in the playoffs, and I could get six points, six and a half points with Ohio State, I'd be taking it blindly. Sign me up, no chance in hell I'm turning that down. Unfortunately, it's a little more complicated than that because I can't unsee what I've seen this season. Obviously, when you're dealing with teams like Georgia and Ohio State, both of them spent the majority of this season blowing their opponents out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to find some concerning moments for both teams and see if their opponents can mimic it. Um, starting with Ohio State, obviously we know what the concerning uh, moment for Ohio State was. They just lost to Michigan in their last game. So how did Michigan accomplish this? Well, pretty much the same way everyone expected them to accomplish it if they were gonna pull it off running the ball. I mean, Jim Harbaugh has pretty much given us the recipe on how to beat this Ohio State team two years in a row. Run the ball between the tackles. It seems so simple, especially when we watched Michigan do it two years in a row. Uh, the problem with that is most teams find themselves down 10, 14, 17 points pretty early because Ohio State's offense is so insane that establishing the run game kind of seems like an un unrealistic goal at that point. So can Georgia run the ball between the tackles on Ohio State like Michigan did? Of course they can. This is Georgia. I mean, Georgia does Michigan better than Michigan does. This is the best offensive line in the FBS. Yes, I would take their offensive line even over Michigan. I will say that I think we're dealing with a little bit of smoke and mirrors here when it comes to the numbers. Um, and this is a, the first spot where I really think we find a little bit of value in Ohio State. Now, you know the public's looking at that Michigan game. They're looking at the final score and they're looking at the stats thinking Michigan just blew Ohio State out. But keep in mind, at the end of the fourth quarter, Michigan ripped off an 85-yard touchdown run and a 75-yard touchdown run. That's two carries, 160 yards, and two touchdowns added to the stats. If you take those away, Ohio State actually held Michigan to just 92 yards rushing. Combine that with the fact that every single year, Ohio State is forced to play Michigan in the cold weather because it gets played on Thanksgiving weekend in one of Ohio State or Michigan, always in the cold. Uh, that favors Michigan in that offensive line as well. This game's being played in Georgia. It's gonna be beautiful. It's supposed to be like 66 degrees. So yes, Georgia's run game is elite. Their offensive line's elite. Yes, on paper, Georgia should be able to run the ball in Ohio State, same as Michigan. But I will say I expect the Buckeyes defense to be definitely more prepared to stop at this time than they were in the Michigan game. Now, what about Georgia's defense against Ohio State's offense? And this is interesting because this is the two team strength. This is the premier matchup right here. Um, and what I did was I wanted to see Georgia's success against elite passing attacks because despite playing in the SEC, if you look at their schedule this year and even last year, they don't play a ton of elite passing attacks because that's exactly what Ohio State is. They drop back to pass a lot. CJ Stroud, Marvin Harrison Jr., even though Smith and Jigba is not going to play, this is still 
arguably the most explosive passing attack in the entire FBS. So in the past two years, there's really only three instances where this Georgia's defense has seen a top five passing attack. Obviously you have Tennessee from earlier this year and the Georgia defense handled Tennessee. They handled themselves really, really well. The final score was 27-13. The offense wasn't great, um, but they still, they, they took care of the balls in that game. The other two were the two Alabama games from the end of the year last year, and that's where it gets a little concerning, but I'll get to that in one second. Can we take a glance at the SEC championship game? Yeah, Georgia won comfortably. They won 50 to 30, blowout. But LSU threw for over 500 yards, 502 yards passing in that game. Now Georgia did win that game by 20 points, and yeah, the majority of that game was played with uh, when Georgia had a big lead, so well, obviously LSU is going to pass more. But still, if you're allowing 502 yards passing, you're not going to cover many spreads. And that's really what's scaring me off laying six and a half points here because if, you know what it really reminds me of? The first Alabama game last year, last year's SEC championship. If you remember, I'm pretty sure Georgia was six, six and a half point favorites in that as well. And everyone is, was expecting the Bulldogs to just steamroll them. Meanwhile, Bryce Young comes out throwing the ball downfield, completely catches Georgia off guard. They hung 41 points and beat Georgia in that game. And I'm not saying that Georgia's gonna be caught off guard by Ohio State's passing attack, but the truth is, this might be the most explosive passing attack they've seen in all of this year and last year. I have this theory that CJ Stroud and this Ohio State team's kryptonite is just Jim Harbaugh and the Michigan Wolverines. And I think we'd have a lot stronger opinion of this team if they didn't play Michigan every year in the cold. I'm, I'm taking the points here. I can't believe I'm doing it. I'm fading Georgia in the playoffs. Give me the six and a half. Give me Ohio State plus six and a half. Let's go Buckeyes. If anything changes with this bet, I'll let you know on Twitter. So give me a follow there if you're interested. Also, if you um, want the final tickets that we do, we put out uh, best bets and parlays for every single sport. Head over to kylecurms.com and or download the Sauce Network app. College football playoffs is finally here. Uh, remember to bet responsibly. We, we start off college bowl season bad. We were on the come up. It looks like we might have a bad day today. We'll see. Um, but always remember to bet responsibly, and I will talk to you on Twitter.